Wisconsin's election mess. Some voters confused and concerned about going to the polls during a pandemic. Tried to get an absentee ballot. I followed everything just exactly as it said. I never got it. I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. What went wrong and what can we learn for November's election? I'll ask the chairman of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Plus, Wisconsin Democrats call for this year's remaining elections to be all mail-in and small businesses struggling for survival. The help available to them during this crisis. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us. A travesty, irresponsible, reckless, a hot mess. Those are words we heard used in national media coverage of Wisconsin's election last Tuesday. 11th hour action from the governor in the courts resulted in an election called off and then ordered back on within just hours. On Monday, voters who never received their absentee ballots had two choices. Go to the polls during a deadly pandemic or not vote at all. You feel safe going in there? And I really don't, but with the virus, you know, I still had to come out and uh, get my vote on. In the city of Milwaukee, voters had only five polling places they could go to. Usually they have 180. The city's top election officials said they had to plan for the number of poll workers they knew would be available. But Republicans blasted the city for not making more use of the National Guard. I'm a 71 year old woman with underlying conditions. And I sat at home today and decided I had to be here to vote because I don't want this happening again. I cannot believe that people are asked to do this, risk their lives because some people don't want to judge elected. How'd it go in there? It went fine, nice and smooth, no problems whatsoever. Other cities had more polling places and the voters didn't seem to have many difficulties. Wisconsin's two U.S. Senators are asking the Postal Service Inspector General to investigate why dozens of ballots went undelivered or were returned to municipalities. And we don't even know who won yet. Those results will come out tomorrow. What happened on Tuesday has raised questions about what might happen in the November general election when some experts say we could see a resurgence of COVID-19. I asked the chairman of Wisconsin's Elections Commission how we can do better in the fall. Commissioner, how would you say Tuesday went overall? We had strong voter participation, average to even higher than average, and the way that our voters and, and our clerks were able to convert over to voting by mail was just phenomenal. We got about 75% voting by absentee, so that was really strong. But I think there's some lessons that we learned. One is last minute court rulings, they cause confusion. Second is don't close 95% of your polling places like they did in Green Bay and Milwaukee, you'll cause crowding and long lines. And the third thing is, hey, vote by mail is great, but there are problems with the mail. So it's really important that we have the backstop protection of having in-person voting on election day. The state health department has said that they will be tracking new coronavirus cases to see if they can tie that back at all to the in-person voting that happened in Wisconsin. Are you kind of holding your breath waiting for those results? No, I won't. The state, the DHS, the Department of Health Services has predicted a peak for Wisconsin to happen between April 23rd and May 23rd. And what happened on April 7th won't change that at all. I mean, that's when we expect to see our peak. But are you confident people weren't infected Tuesday? People have been going out. I mean, we have left our grocery stores open. You can go to Target, Walmart, you can go to Menards and so on. And people have been going out and about. I mean, we've had community spread in Wisconsin now for weeks. And there is some backlash nationally. This was a big story this week. The New Jersey governor saying, I don't want a Wisconsin where folks have to pick between exercising their right to vote on the one hand and protecting their own personal health. How do you respond to that? Okay, we successfully ran an election on Tuesday where in everywhere except in Milwaukee and Green Bay, things went smoothly. And there were a lot of, lot of 
thousands of polling places, we had seven where there were extended wait times and lines. We can do this again. We're going to do it on May 12th when the 7th Congressional District has a special election. So it's just over a month from now. We'll be applying all the same principles and procedures again. And each time we'll learn from it. Um, we saw uh, clerks handle it well. And we saw some clerks handle it poorly in, in Milwaukee and Green Bay. They have the right to make local decisions, but it's really too bad. I mean, in Green Bay, they turned down volunteer poll workers. They turned down the National Guard. They made some poor choices. And unfortunately, if, if one that you're saying didn't go well being Milwaukee, I mean, that is a big city. So that affects a lot of people in Wisconsin. What are your concerns with moving to mail-in for the November election? Okay, so I, I think we definitely can make improvements. One thing would be the clerks need more help. So I think we need to find funding for more clerical assistance while these are being processed and mailed out and as they come back in. I think that we can provide funding for the costs of the envelopes, the postage, and so on. I think that we can look at potentially doing centralized mailing where the local clerk still uh, does the evaluation of the request and, and orders the mailing to happen, but the mailing might be actually done by a, by a mail service or done centrally in Madison. I think there's a number of improvements that we could make as we go along. But the key thing is you still have to have in-person voting. Even states like Washington State that are, are primarily vote by mail still have in-person voting. So if we got to this time where we were 75% mail and 25% in person, we don't know the exact number until Monday. But but if if we were 75, 25, I think you'll see in these next elections, we could easily increase that. We might get to where we've, we've got, you know, 85 or 90 percent by mail. And um, then the in-person becomes a lot easier to manage and handle. Assembly Democrats quickly offered a bill that would move all remaining 2020 elections in Wisconsin to voting by mail. I talked to Madison Democratic Representative Lisa Subak, who serves on the Campaign and Elections Committee and signed on to the bill. So, Representative, how do you think the election went? You know, I think that what I saw in the elections was an absolute debacle. Certainly, I've been hearing from constituents, um, over the last couple of days who weren't able to vote, who had to make the choice between exercising their right to vote or obeying the safer at home order. Um, I talked to constituents who were afraid to get out and vote on Tuesday, but who hadn't cast an absentee ballot and certainly heard from um, constituents who were disenfranchised because they did, couldn't get a witness for their absentee ballot or they weren't able to vote on election day, but had not received their absentee ballot in time. I think that, you know, overall it was a debacle, but I think the biggest shame of it all is that we risk the lives of countless Wisconsinites. I mean, tens of thousands of people who potentially have been exposed as we work so hard to bend the curve on COVID-19 and as we work so hard to control its spread and to, um, to, to slow it down, I think Tuesday may very well have set us back in ways that we cannot even imagine, and that's horrifying. Does the governor share some of the blame in this by waiting until the 11th hour to try to move the election? I think that no matter what had happened here, um, the courts made their decision. And ultimately, um, because of the inaction of the legislature and the actions taken by the courts, we could not delay this election. Um, you know, the court said it was in our in our hands to do it the governor called on us to do it and leadership um the speaker of the house and the senate majority leader made a conscious decision not to have the legislature meet and not to take action on delaying this election or delaying in-person voting is there a bipartisan way to go forward and make changes mm -hmm. before November. We've heard from the medical community that there could be another outbreak in the fall. 
Sure. So I am hopeful that we can come together and do this. I mean, if there was ever a moment in time that calls for bipartisan action, if there was ever a moment in time where the right thing to do is for us to come together, to find where we have common ground, and to stop this public health, health crisis, it is now. How do you do a mail-in <clears throat> election? I mean, there are so many things at play with that. How do you make sure it gets done on time and in the right way? Sure. So I think that if we act now and we act quickly, if we take legislative action now to make this change, we have a lot of time to plan for it. It gives our state and local election officials the time that they need to put together a plan and to make this happen. It gives our postal service time to know what to expect and to prepare for the increased volume and to prioritize that election mail. It would give the people the time to adjust to a new system. And this is what people are asking for. I mean, this is not the, this is not pie in the sky. People are saying, I was afraid to go vote on Tuesday. Um, hope, I want to be able to cast my ballot. And that is what this reacts to. And I think it makes good sense. Done right, certainly we can make this happen. The state of Oregon already does this. And it works. Um, it works there and it can work for us. Republican legislative leaders say they'll hold an extraordinary session starting Tuesday to consider a coronavirus relief package. The Assembly and Senate will meet on different days. Some lawmakers will attend in person. Others will join the session virtually. Coronavirus is an economic catastrophe. Coming up, new numbers of unemployed Americans and the health the state is offering small businesses to try to keep them afloat. And later, contingency convention planning.